Okay, so I have set it up as a sandwich. And in between my black bread and my white bread, I have what's called flatting. If I go to the assignment, I can see halfway down the assignment, there's this link to an exhaustive explanation of digital coloring. In these slides, it shows you what flatting is. Flatting is random weird colors that fill in behind. Instead of using any random weird colors, I like to use something from, from print color reproduction history, from illustration history. And you'll see that on slide number four. These mixes of cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, these were the only colors that were able to be used in reproductions from the 1930s to the 1970s. And that's because of the print technology and the absorption of the paper stock. So I like to use this basic scenario of colors. Old comic books, even ones I read in the 1980s, were limited to just these colors. And I think I have an example of it here. And they would actually be filled in by, by uh, workers with watercolors in like the basement of these publishing houses. And they would take the codes and fill them in. And those all corresponded to the print codes that the printers would use. So I just did a screen grab of this. I'm going to move that into my folder. This is going to be my flatting colors. So how do you use inspiration? You're going to drag them in between your sandwich layers. So I have my inspiration of my cartoon cereal box mascots. Make that nice and small in the corner. And then I've got my flatting color inspirations. Really bright, really bold, really easy to print. Because they're all as diverse from each other as they can be. Now I'm going to merge those two together, but I might have some other inspirations for my more finished color. You see how this is a lot more nuanced. You don't see a lot of browns in the flatting colors because brown is a mixture of, of all the inks, cyan, magenta, and yellow with black. Okay, and then other inspirations. In the assignment, I posted some of mine, right? So some of these guys. So I might take those, take a screen grab of it, and bring that screen grab into my assignment folder and bring that into photo P as well. Tuck that off into the corner. And it's all underneath my line art, right? Why is that helpful? Well, because if you have an image open in photo P, you can steal the colors directly from it. Very, very helpful. So I'm going to do that one here. I'm going to duplicate it. And I'm going to move the other ones over to here. So they're on the side. Whoops. Especially this one. We'll make this a little bit bigger. So that one's pretty useful too. Grab this. I'm going to rasterize it. I'm just moving uh, inspiration around. I'll put it down here. All right. So now I've got color inspirations all the way around my creature. I also have different types of coloring techniques from flat color to hard edge duotone or what's called cell shading to softer edge duotone. And they give me ideas of not just colors I can use, but um, ways of playing with lighting and, and everything. So I've got a lot of these inspirations 
I'm going to merge those all into just one layer. This is like making a blueprint of what you want the inside of your sandwich to look like. I'm putting it on a piece of paper. So I'm going to take all those layers. I'm going to say Command E or merge the layers into this. And then I'm going to lock that and name it Inspiration. So this will not be in my finished sandwich. This is just helping me get there. All right. Now flatting. This is the only unlocked layer. How do I start filling it up with these flat colors so that then I can replace them with the local color? I do that by using my magic wand tool and making sure it's set to contiguous. And I would set it to a tolerance of 32 with no feather. Okay. Then I'm going to click on my black bread layer. And even though the black bread layer is locked, I can still select from it. So I'm going to select the beak, the shape within the beak with my, well, I'll do the, the, uh, the eyeball first. Actually, I'll do the body. Let's just do the body. All right. So I click on the body and it's selected inside that shape, even though it's a, a locked layer. Didn't hurt it at all. If I turn it off, it will show me exactly the shape I've selected. This is like cutting the glass to go into the leading. Now I move to the flatting layer, and I'm going to use a tool we haven't used very much, the paint bucket tool, which you'll find underneath the gradient tool. Come on. And with that paint bucket tool, if I hold down Option, I can steal a color. So when you hold down Option and then click, it will steal the color and make it your foreground color for whatever you click on that's open in Photopea. So what do I want the, the body color to be? Let's do a light blue, like one of these flatting colors. And then I just drop it in. And Photopea is working hard. Let me make sure I've closed these other things like Photoshop and preview. And Spotify. All right. And save. Command S. And I want to save it to my desktop. This is my full color spot illustration. Okay. Now, what do I have? I have a pretty interesting looking shape. I can hit Command D to deselect it. That's my first shape of flat color. If I turn on the black color layer, it looks like that. Right. Now, if I'm doing it in terms of flatting, it doesn't really matter what colors I use as long as they're not the same as other colors. So let me just fill in all of these shapes. So let's go pretty fast. Go to my black layer, click on something, click on my paint bucket, hold down option, select a color. And I like to use, I don't use white at all. Instead, I use kind of the off whites. I go to the flatting layer and I drop it in. So even for the eyeball, I'm going to use a, a flatting color, even if eventually it will be solid white or close to it. And I want it to be a different color, so I'm going to use a light blue and then drop it in. So magic wand first, select. Flatting, paint bucket tool, drop it in. If you want to change your color, hold down Option, drop it in. Let's do purple for the inside of the eye. And this leg with Photopea is annoying, but that's what we get with freeware. And then even the little highlight in the eye, that's not filled in until I put colored glass behind it. So at this stage, I'm going to add another optional layer that will get turned off 
before the end, I'm going to duplicate my white bread layer and I'm going to say edit fill with middle gray. And that will show me what still needs to be filled in, like the highlights, right? So I go to my black bread layer, I use my magic wand, I select it. And to speed things up, I can use shift and I can select on other things that I think would be bright along with the highlight in the eye, like the talons. So you can hold shift and select multiple shapes within your line art. Right? Then I move to my flatting layer. I click on the, the paint bucket. And now I'm going to choose maybe a light pink. Hold down option. Click it and then fill it in. There we go. Then hit Command D to deselect. All right. At any time, you can turn off your black line art and see what flat shapes you have. And you just keep going. So basically, I show you the flatting step because it's an entry level job in digital art because it's really preparing your file for the person that's going to do the, the finished coloring, which is a higher paying job. But it's good to do it for yourself because it, it makes you feel less intimidated about filling up the space, even if you're going to use different colors later. Because what's so great is once you've put in flats, you don't need to go to the black line art layer anymore. You can just use your paint bucket and you can swap out your colors. Which is really handy. All right, almost there. Got a few more to do. Magic wand. Now, what does the magic wand work on? It works on shapes that are fully contained. So if I had an opening somewhere, the magic wand would not work. And so then I need to use the lasso within my line art, right? Otherwise it would color the whole background. But you'll figure that out. You understand how it works with layers. What's nice is in even just this limited flatting palette, I've got plenty of blues. And most of my cartoon mascot is blue. And so I can use the same blue in multiple places if I want. Or I can vary it up. Oops. The nice thing about locking it, locking every layer other than the one you, you're doing flat color on, is you won't accidentally paint on the wrong layer, which is a really easy mistake to make. And even when they're locked, you can still make selections from them. So in a real flatting professional job, I would make each of these fingers a different color. Because they're each separate shapes. But to speed it up, I'm just going to make them all the same, but different than the other colors around them. So if anyone wants to work in digital art for a publishing house, for a design house, for an ad firm, they're always looking for people to be flatters. And you get a lot better at it with a lot of practice. But I can't say it's the most inspiring job. All right, now I'm going to get into some of these more interesting chromatic gray colors for the helmet. And when it starts to lag on you, hit Command S, save your work. And I still have a little bit more to color, right? 
So you can use the gray background or the white background.